Hello, and welcome to the Sparta Group podcast. We aim to provide you with up-to-date interviews and debate with opinion leaders in the health, well-being, rehabilitation, and mental health space, from our studio or from conferences. Hi, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Anthony of Sparta Health, and today we'll be taking a look at anti-psychiatry. Just so you know, some of the terms will be used in their historical context, and I really hope this doesn't cause offence to any listeners. So what is it? How did it all begin? And what does it even mean? Let's find out. In the past few years, there has been particular focus on mental health issues, with millions suffering from a multitude of emotional and sometimes behavioural disorders. Thousands of charities have been set up to try and help support people who are suffering from conditions such as depression, anxiety, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, to name just a few. With the extremely pressurised society we have today in all areas, including professional, financial and social, there has been a major spike in the number of mental ill health cases. The majority of people nowadays are very supportive of others and have a good understanding of mental health issues and how debilitating they can be, and also how much impact they can have on your life. However, this has not always been the case throughout history. Psychiatry has always been, and in many respects still is, the basis of treatment for people with mental health conditions and disorders. I'm sure most of you are aware of what psychiatry is, but for those who might not be so sure, it's all about the diagnosis, prevention and treatment of mental health conditions and disorders. So in really simple terms, It's the process that happens from when you start feeling symptoms to when you hopefully begin that road to recovery. It primarily involves the use of medication and other forms of treatment, the goal being the relief of mental suffering associated with disorders with the aim to improve mental well-being. So if you've heard of or know a little bit more about what psychiatry is at a really basic level, then what could anti-psychiatry be and why would people support that? So anti-psychiatry is exactly what it says on the tin. It's essentially a belief against the practice of psychiatry. Many believe that medication and scientific intervention was the wrong direction to go in for treating people with mental health conditions. And so they decided to protest and fight for alternative methods of treatment. There were lots of reasons why people were against psychiatry, and not all of those were positive, or perhaps moral reasons. Some were against it as they didn't believe in mental illness at all, and others just saw the treatment as wrong. So let's dive into everything you need to know about the anti-psychiatry movement, and what its supporters were fighting for. So how did anti-psychiatry start? Well, The anti-psychiatry movement, as one way to call it, came about in the 20th century, around the time when lots of people were institutionalised who may have had mental illness. Asylums were rife, and psychiatry was the basis of what went on inside them. However, the issue seemed to be less about the principles of psychiatry and more about how the staff inside the asylums administered their practice. There were numerous reports of abusive treatment by the carers and the asylums actually driving the patients to act, and I quote, insanely, because that was the only way that they felt they could survive living in that environment. A man called Ronald Lang was a pivotal character and helped construct the basis of the anti-psychiatry movement. His views and arguments are now viewed as effectively void and nonsensical. However, they were what kick-started the movement and led others to form their own views and opinions on psychiatry. Lang used schizophrenia to make his argument, essentially saying how he thought the illness was caused by the family environment an individual grew up in. He saw people suffering from schizophrenia to actually be the sanest one in the family group and that the issue was with people around them. This is now disregarded as a valid point as schizophrenia involves so much more than that, and people are now a lot more understanding of how difficult it can be to live with such a disorder. However, Lang's idea shook the population, and many joined him 
which catapulted the anti-psychiatry movement. David Cooper was another revolutionary figure in the anti-psychiatry movement and was the one who actually came up with the name anti-psychiatry. Whilst Lang and Cooper ultimately wanted the same thing, they had different reasons and arguments for why they were against psychiatry. Cooper took his views from his belief and support in Marxism. Now, Marxism is all about understanding the relations of class to the way society works, and also understanding social conflict. It's the concepts that we use to form the basis of communism and takes all social factors such as economy and politics into account. Cooper therefore used these beliefs and concepts and saw it as the best way to try and understand where mental illnesses came from, rather than using science and medicine. Similar to Lang, Cooper saw that the relationship and love or lack of it within a family, was a major driving factor for mental illnesses. He also believed that the sort of environment that should be created to help and to treat people with mental ill health was one where there weren't labels such as doctor, patient, social worker, and so on, and instead felt that everyone should be put on the same level of authority in order to try and best understand and to help the individual suffering from mental ill health. Cooper and Lang's differing theories and reasoning divided many, however many agreed with and supported their ultimate goal. Essentially, they both wanted to abolish the concepts of asylums and hospitals for people suffering with mental ill health, and instead offer them hospitality and safe places they could go to if and when they chose to. So what are the arguments of anti-psychiatry believers? Well, one of the main arguments of people that follow and believe in anti-psychiatry is that they see mental illness as not being a physical illness, as it's not something that shows up on brain scans and doesn't always have a concrete scientific explanation as to why an individual is suffering with the symptoms. The main illness that supporters focus on to explain their argument is schizophrenia, as this is something that can't really be explained by CT scans or other forms of tests, and it is a disease that presents itself primarily in a behavioural way. Therefore, they don't see it as a physical illness, and many actually consider it to be a myth or made-up disorder. Due to the fact that many anti-psychiatry followers don't see mental ill health as a physical illness, They therefore don't think it's right to treat patients with medication and other forms of treatment. There are, however, different levels of anti-psychiatry supporters. Some simply push for an alternative way to treat patients that doesn't involve institutions and drugs, and others actually don't believe in the whole idea and principles of mental ill health in general, and instead see it as a myth. Many people who protest for anti-psychiatry are actually doing so in a way to support people with mental ill health and are trying to advocate their rights and promote them having a choice in how they are treated. They push for there to be a more humane approach to their recovery, especially with all the cases and stories of horrible ill treatment in the past. Another argument put forward by supporters of anti-psychiatry is they ask, who is it that chooses who and what is considered sane and insane? They ask, what is it that is really normal? And how can anyone know for sure what behaviour is the right behaviour? They therefore see that labelling someone as mentally unwell and forcing them into an asylum like they did in the late 19th and early 20th century as a moral or wrong. Religion is also at the forefront of many arguments for anti-psychiatry. Many Christian groups felt that if an individual was presenting with insane behaviour, then this was something they considered to be within the realms of religion and morality, rather than a medical or scientific issue. Christianity also historically has an issue with the practice of psychiatry, as the religion holds the belief that man was created by God and, by choice, man chose to be separate from him and therefore cannot reflect the perfect image of God. By this principle, 
Many Christians believe that any issues, including mental ill health, that a human encounters is as a consequence of the choice at the start of time to be a separate entity to God. This therefore goes against the principles of psychiatry, which tries to put a scientific and medical reason behind an individual suffering with a condition or illness. It's important when considering a movement and having a belief to understand the other side of the argument. Whilst there have, yes, been many negative connotations and stories during the development of psychiatry, there is, of course, more to the practice which can actually be seen in a positive light. Psychiatry isn't all about drugs and medication, and a lot of what the practice actually involves is in line with what many anti-psychiatry supporters want. A psychiatrist's job heavily involves talking to a patient and taking the time to try and understand them and their way of thinking, with an attempt to help the patient and to understand their condition and to think of ways that their symptoms can be helped. This method of help can be useful in identifying social factors, whether it be financial, personal or professional, that could be sort of at the root of an individual's problems and so can help pave a non-medical way for them to overcome presenting issues. The conflict between psychiatry and anti-psychiatry has mainly been caused and arisen from where individual psychiatrists have not acted in the right way, have been more forceful in giving patients treatment and have treated them in degrading ways. This is something that is hopefully mainly in the past now, and so there should be scope for a bridge to be built between psychiatrists and anti-psychiatry believers, where both their desires and beliefs can be considered and put into action. So what has anti-psychiatry achieved? Well, there have been many positive impacts from the anti-psychiatry movement. With all the protesting and petitions, they have actually been successful in helping to fine-tune the practice of psychiatry. They have helped to allow people, whether in the health sector or not, to distinguish where medical intervention may be needed and where alternative methods may be more appropriate, whilst ensuring that patient choice and well-being is at the centre of the decision-making process. So now you should be pretty clued up on everything to do with anti-psychiatry. You should now know how it started, from the inhumane treatment often found in the mental institutions and asylums of the 19th and early 20th century, and that it has helped towards the positive and supportive attitude that we have today of mental ill health. Society today is a lot more accepting and hopefully will continue to do more to increase the awareness of and the quality of life for people suffering with mental health conditions. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, make sure to subscribe for more content like today and tune into our next episode to learn all about archetypes. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. At Sparta Group, we are keen to hear your thoughts about the topics discussed today. So please tweet us at Sparta underscore health or visit our website for more information and support.